giant underground city found under the Grand Canyon. Tales about extinct cities and civilizations that lie beyond our knowledge as borders and the horizons have existed for a very long time. Many of these stories have been lost in the mists of time, leading us to wonder if they ever existed. They have come to us from the most remote mountains, jungles, and untamed areas in our globe. One such story involves a mysterious adventurer who is said to have discovered a forgotten city beneath the ground that no one had ever seen. It originates from the wilds of the U.S. state of Arizona, that too under the Grand Canyon. In the April 5, 1909 edition of the Arizona Gazette, located among various mundane news of the time, there is an article that jumps off the page with its spectacular title, Mysteries of Immense Rich Caverns Being Brought to Light. Remarkable finds indicate ancient people migrated from Orient. It revolves around an explorer named G.E. Kincaid, who sometimes went through the Grand Canyon along the Colorado River in a boat looking for minerals when he noticed some unusual stains in the sedimentary foundation about 2,000 feet above the riverbed. His discovery of the opening of a tunnel meandering into the dank darkness, together with some stairs leading away from the entrance and some chisel marks on the wall, was strange enough that he drew ashore and laboriously climbed the rocks. Inquisitive, Kincaid traveled along the main corridor for several hundred feet in the pitch black until he reached a tomb containing mummies and artifacts. Kincaid allegedly walked back down the river after realizing he had made an incredible discovery to inform the Smithsonian Institute of what he had seen. Under the direction of Professor S. A. Jordan, the Smithsonian Institute then allegedly launched a thorough exploration into the cave to find that the central passageway penetrated nearly a mile underground, about 1,480 feet below the surface, where it joined a massive chamber of some sort from which branched off a series of tunnels, like the spokes of a wheel. Along these tunnels could be found an array of rooms filled with numerous artifacts and having been once inhabited, as well as some shrine, and Kincaid would describe it all in great detail, saying, The main passageway is about 12 feet wide, narrowing to 9 feet towards the farther end. About 57 feet from the entrance, the first passages branched off to the right and left, along which, on both sides, are several rooms about the size of an ordinary living room of today, though some are 30 to 40 square. These are entered by oval-shaped doors and are ventilated by round air spaces through the walls into the passages. The walls are about 3 feet 6 inches in thickness. The passages are chiseled or hewn as straight as an engineer could lay out. The ceiling of many of the rooms converge to a center. The side passage near the entrance run at a sharp angle from the main hall, but towards the rear they gradually reach a right angle direction. Over a hundred feet from the entrance is a cross hall, several hundred feet long, in which the idol, or image, of the people's god sitting cross-legged with a lotus flower or lily in each hand. The cast of the face is oriental, and the carving shows a skillful hand, and the entire is remarkably well preserved, as is everything in the cavern. The idol must resemble Buddha, though scientists are still determining what religious worship it represents. Considering everything found thus far, it is possible that the worship resembles Tibet's ancient people. Surrounding this idol are smaller images, some beautiful in form, other crooked-necked and distorted shapes, symbolic, probably, of good and evil. There are two giant cacti with protruding arms, one on each side of the dais on which the god squats. All this is carved out of hard rock resembling marble. In the opposite corner of this cross hall were found tools of all descriptions made of copper. These people undoubtedly knew the lost art of hardening this metal, which chemists have sought for centuries without results. Some charcoal and other material probably used in the process were on a bench running around the workroom. There is also slag and stuff similar to mat, showing that these ancient people smelted ore, but so far, no trace of where or how this was done has been discovered, nor the origins of the ore. Among other finds are vases or urns and cups of copper and gold, made very artistic in design. The pottery work includes enameled ware and glazed vessels. 
In addition, Kincaid mentioned sea granaries, a large building constructed of what appears to be a rigid cement of unknown origin. The room measured 400 by 700 feet and was assumed to have served as the main dining hall. Traces of a gray metal that could not be identified but resembled platinum in numerous yellow stones scattered across the floor. It was thought that the vast network of tunnels and caverns could easily accommodate up to 50,000 people. Numerous engravings on the walls, entrances, and on items were discovered throughout the complex that seemed to be some hieroglyphic writing. Kincaid says, on all the urns, on the walls over the doorways, and tablets of stone which were found by the image are mysterious hieroglyphics, the key to which the Smithsonian Institution hopes yet to discover. These writings resemble those found on the rocks about this valley. The engravings on the tablet probably has something to do with the people's religion. Similar hieroglyphics have been found in the peninsula of Yucatan, but these are not found in the Orient. Some believe these cave dwellers built the old canals in the Salt River Valley. Among the pictorial writings, only two animals are found. One is of prehistoric type. The crypt had numerous mummies that Kincaid had caught a glimpse of when he first secretly entered the darkness, but which, upon closer scrutiny, were stranger than he had anticipated, was one of the oddest and most intriguing of the finds. The oppressive darkness is described as unusually dense and impenetrable, as if actively driving the light away. Some parts of the cave system were inaccessible or unable to be opened, with the entire complex seeming sinister, unfriendly, and utterly inhospitable to outsiders. Kincaid would describe the overall eerie and slightly evil mood of the underground system in one particular corridor that was too intimidating even to explore. Kincaid is very evasive on the exact location of the alleged underground city and wants to keep it a secret, stressing that the cave opening is nearly impossible to access, almost 1,486 feet down a sheer canyon wall, and that since it is on government land, no one will be permitted anywhere near it. G.E. Kincaid, the explorer who discovered the vast underground citadel of the Grand Canyon during a trip from Green River, Wyoming, down Colorado in a wooden boat to Yuma several months ago, brought the most recent information about the progress of the explorations of what is now considered by scientists to be not only the oldest archaeological discovery in the United States, but one of the most valuable in the world. The Smithsonian Institute is funding the study and Mr. Kincaid, an archaeologist, has uncovered finds that nearly certainly show that the race that lived in this enigmatic cavern was carved out of the solid rock by human hands. 